Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. God, with this heat, I think the first thing I'm going to do when I get home is I'm going to stick my head in the freezer like Raj from Hell's Kitchen. No, I'm not. I'm going to have a cold shower and I'm going to hopefully cool myself off and not become a puddle in my own house. But of course, you didn't come here to find out if I need chilling out. No, I want to talk more about the police this time. But before I do that, I just want to quickly mention Keir the Traitor Starmer, because as I've said in some of my other videos, he is probably going to be the most hated man and the biggest traitor that this country has ever seen in its entire history and probably for thousands of years to come. So much so that even Labour voters despise him. And how sad is it when his approval rating goes down to minus 16 and some people are even saying that even Harold Shipman isn't as unpopular as Kit the traitor Starmer. Now that really has to tell you something. For anybody who doesn't know, Harold Shipman is basically responsible for screwing over the elderly. Responsible for a fuckload of murders, as far as the elderly people are concerned, using his position as a doctor to get into people's homes, give people medicines they don't need, and kill them off that way. Killed hundreds of people, I believe, if I recall correctly. I mean, it really is a sad state of affairs when you're even more despised than one of the biggest mass murders in British history. Or murderers, rather. But don't worry, there'll be plenty of time to roast Keir the traitor Starmer. I need to focus on the police right now because there are things that need to be brought up about them. It turns out that the police have started resigning in their thousands. I think there's at least 5,000 officers over the last year or so that have decided this job's not for me. And they've decided to say, you know what? We don't worry about... Stroke number one. Maybe I need Harold Shipman. Anyway, they've had 5,000 people resign that said, we don't want to be a part of this. And to be honest, who can really blame these people? Please bear in mind that not every officer uh, is as crooked as the people at the top. Though there are some people who are clearly just thugs in uniform and do deserve to be tarred with that brush. But I suspect a lot of the coppers that are leaving the force right now are the good coppers. I suspect a lot of the people who are leaving are some of the better coppers who have a moral compass and actually have some spine. And they don't want to be a part of the DEI. That is, I don't want to use the word transforming because that would imply something good. Like a metamorphosis, like a caterpillar into a butterfly. I prefer the word mutating because it is mutating our country into some kind of fucking abomination that nobody wants to be a part of. Think of Quasimodo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame if Quasimodo was a backstabbing son of a bitch. And that's basically what you have pulling the strings up in the police. And of course, people like Mark Rowley and Sadiq Khan, and of course, Keir the Traitor Starmer, who are all directly linked at the top with all of the police in the country. Maybe those 5,000 people have realized just how crooked and corrupt our police are right at the top. Maybe they realize that these police are basically becoming Keir the Traitor Starmer's foot soldiers at this point. His own personal standing army, if you will. Or is that the illegal immigrants that are coming over? I can't make up my mind on that one. Yet we have NPCs like Yvette Cooper, who only just read the room and realize, oh, the police are not respected as much. What? I would never have known that. Anyway, moving on. I think people would have read the room a bit quicker than what poor Yvette Cooper has done. Or is it Yvette Clueless Cooper? I think they would have realized at least six years ago that these traitors in the uniform are not serving the British public. Which, last time I che checked, wasn't it the police's duty to protect and serve? Maybe I'm living off on that, that far off 
in the distance place called the real world. Maybe I'm living over there. Maybe I should come back to dreamland and fucking lollipops and rainbows and candy land or something like that. Maybe then I'd understand the shit storm that these people are trying to cook up. But let me tell you something. There are three fundamental places where the police have lost respect from the British public. And I will illustrate them now. So let's get rid of the first and most obvious one first. Number one, political persecutions. And it doesn't just start with the people who were concerned parents and patriots who rioted across the country, like Southport, Plymouth, Stoke-on-Trent, Liverpool, Manchester, Edinburgh, etc, etc. I'm talking about, of course, Tommy Robinson. How that man has been politically persecuted for most of his life. Some of it legitimately, most of it not. And I know I'm going to get some fucking comments about, oh, Tommy Ten Names and Tommy the Grifter, which, frankly, I don't think that's even remotely true. But I'm not here to talk about my subjective opinions. I'm here to talk about the police. But Tommy Robinson has been persecuted for the last 10 plus years. Obviously, there are some very prominent examples of this shit, including in Leeds, where he was drummed up on a false charge of breaching the peace, and then that was changed to contempt of court when he was recording outside Leeds Crown Court, making sure he didn't step on the grounds of the court. Because if some people have known from when he did this, or when I've mentioned this in some of my older videos in the past on my old channel, you'll remember that one time he did get prosecuted because what he did was he's holding his phone what he didn't realize back in the day was if you step on the grounds of the crown court like if you step on the general premises of it and you're recording they can arrest you for that they can drum you up on contempt of court so tommy basically went and got one of the top lawyer firms to teach him about this and he stayed off the Leeds Crown Court property. He even asked the officers, is this the land of the court? So he wouldn't break the law. But they decided to arrest him on the false charge of breach of the peace and then contempt of court. Even though everything he said was actually put mainly on the BBC website, but more contextually, it was already in the public domain. So they couldn't say, oh, we broke a reporting restriction. No. He had not reported anything that was not in the public domain. Everything he stated was open to the public. Therefore, he could not have committed contempt of court in that case. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill, folks, because say it with me, it doesn't suit the narrative. I even remember back in the day when the BBC falsely put out there, he pleaded guilty to contempt of court. But then they had to change that because they knew it was misinformation. But back on point with the police. They arrested him on false charges, brought him to court, and charged him on false charges, and sent him to prison on false charges. They also did this in November of last year, where they arrested him at an anti-Semitism protest as someone who is in full support of the Jews, and they pepper sprayed him in the face at point blank range while he was handcuffed. Which, even if I quoted from the Northern Ireland guide of how to use pepper spray, doesn't change the fact that officer broke his own code of conduct, should have been fired, and should have put Hoodlum on a leash. Anyway, he should have been fired, but of course, we all know he won't be or hasn't been. Hell, they won't dare do anything to officers who persecute Tommy Robertson, I wouldn't be surprised if he got a fucking raise out of it. But the bottom line is this. They falsely arrested Tommy, false warrant, poor spelling, and there was more to it. But they didn't want to admit to us. They lost the body cam footage as well, which, shouldn't that be tampering with evidence? Or destroying evidence? How do you think that would look in court? Hmm? I don't think it would go down very well. Of course, if it was Tommy doing it, they'd have him fucking banged up for years to come. But the police? Nah, they won't worry about them. A law in and of themselves. 
a small part of the two-tier policing that is showcased. But of course, they're also putting people who are against the government in jail. People who tweet against the government. The Online Harms Act, you remember? They're trying to bring this in at the end of the day. They're trying to make it so it's illegal to speak negative things about the government. And these police are kicking down houses' doors to find these people and arrest them because of things they say on the internet. Now, let me be clear. If people are inciting terrorism or violence, should they be arrested? Absolutely, because they're inciting violence and terrorism, which is very, very dangerous. However, these people, in most cases, are not putting that. And hell, there are people who are living in fear right now that if they put out content like this, that Starmer, Keir the traitor Starmer, will send the boys round. That they'll send the boys round and maybe not break people's legs, but surely send them to prison. Yet, and we'll get to it later, they won't send people who attack police to jail or do the most heinous things to children to jail. So clearly there's some kind of political persecution for anybody who speaks negatively about the government or are people that the government just don't like. The second reason that these people are not respected, the police, is the simple fact that they pick sides. They're two-tiered, two-tier policing. They pick a side and they should be apolitical, but they side more often than not with hope not hate, just stop oil, youth demand, which is part of the pro plasticine and just stop oil unholy alliance, and of course pro plasticine themselves. You will never see them bring out the batons or bring out the riot squads or bring back horse guard police to deal with the terrorist sympathising dickheads of pro-Palestine, which is something the mainstream media, of course, are not going to tell you. They won't dare bring them out for them. And they will let them run rampant until they themselves are getting attacked by them. That's the only point they actually take action. However, if you look on the other side of the spectrum, you have concerned parents and patriots who are merely worried about their kids. They're being labelled as far-right because some genuine far-right people have hijacked the protests as an excuse to commit violence, which I'll be absolutely clear on, I do not support or condone. I condemn the bastards who hijacked that shit and did violent acts against the police, against vans, against police stations, committed looting. Someone bitches and complains about, oh, what about the Gregs being looted? Maybe you should stop worrying about the chicken bakes and the sausage bean and cheese melts and start worrying about your side. But we clearly see that pro plasticine doesn't get any action taken on them unless they are getting physically violent. And the mainstream media will drum it as up as, oh, it's a mostly peaceful thing. Oh, they were lovely people. It was all tranquil and everything. Yet we all know what happened, for example, at Notting Hill. I mean, the fact that there was like 334 arrests, there was, I think it was like several dozen stabbings, there was sexual assaults, there was eight people who were stabbed, who I think are fighting for their lives right now. There are all manners of crime being committed at Notting Hill. Yet the police, I suspect, will let a lot of these people off with a slap on the wrist just like they do with pro plasticine how, or Islam in particular, them especially, how they can go out of their way to attack police, armed police, at Manchester Airport, and yet the Muslims will get let off without charge. Yet if we grit our teeth to the police or growl at a dog, we get arrested. I'm actually glad I bought this now. Anyway, you will see Islam attack the police. They get let off without charges. Child rapists get denied prison sentences because the prisons are too full. Oh, but they'll make room for the, for the people at those riots. They'll make room for anybody perceived as far right who were at those protests concerned about their kids. But they won't do anything about the other side, will they?
let's face it, we can see the two-tier policing, even if Keir the traitor Starmer doesn't want to admit it. That's the sad truth about these things, and why I need to do all this, as said on the bus. I need to put the truth out there, because otherwise people are not going to know. People are not going to understand how serious this is, how much trouble we are in. We are police that are more interested in locking people up because they say something on Twitter or Facebook, when they should be more interested in dealing people or dealing with people who are going out and committing real crime. Just needed a better seat. But yeah, put simply, there are too many people out there who are committing real crimes in this country, whether it's robbery, whether it's burglary, whether it's murder, whether it's sexual assault, whether it's rape, that are getting away with these things because our two-tier police can't be bothered, in some cases, to tackle these issues. Or our two-tier justice system thinks it's more important to lock up political dissidents, which comes under point number one again. They've taken political prisoners, basically people who speak negatively about the government or the way the police are handling things. Which again, the mainstream media are not going to tell you about, because they know it goes against their narrative and it would make them look bad. And people, as I said, people may not like me putting this information out on here or doing this on here, but at the end of the day, people need to understand that we don't live in a time now where we can just sit back and let the world go to shit, bluntly speaking. This is why I'm out here. I'm not going to mince my words. I'm going to say it how it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. And I will bloody well do it, whether it's on a bus, whether it's in home, whether it's walking up to work, wherever it is, I will say this, because I'm not going to stay silent on it. These people need to be called out for it. And of course, number three of why the police are not respected in this country is because they are a running joke now. They don't command respect and were feared like they were back in the day, where you had to be like six foot or so as a minimum height requirement so that you could see over an average crowd and wear one of those proper police helmets, which made it so they could see that and see, oh, there's police presence here. Or if it's a criminal, I can see the police there, I better watch what I do. Like the police now are in those silly little cabs, which you'll be lucky if you can see in an average crowd. This is why our police are failing right now, because they don't have the people they used to have. Now let me be clear, I'm not saying women can't apply to be a policeman, or a policewoman, or a police officer, though I don't frankly give a fuck about genders quite frankly. All I care about is they meet the requirements and they fulfill their civic duty, which is to protect and serve. Right now, the only people they're protecting and serving is Islamists. That's the cold bitter truth, whether people want to accept it or not. The police are more interested in appeasing to Islam, running away at the first sign of trouble, rather than what a real police officer would do, is they get stuck in. They would get their hands dirty. They would take out the trash, metaphorically speaking. They would not relent as far as applying liberal use of law. But nowadays, what do we get? We get police with the pride flags over their faces. We have people painting up their cars. And I guarantee you, back in the old day, they'd be told to jog on. They would effectively be told, stop pandering to this shit. But our standards in the police, and as a country as a whole, I guess, with our establishment, has dropped so bloody low that they're willing to appease LGBT, who a lot of them, are often very intolerant of our society, who are very intolerant of certain groups of people. We have been more open and more forgiving of people than any other country. No one's gonna bloody tell me otherwise. But our police are no longer meeting proper standards. The bar has gone from here right down, right down to rock bottom, quite frankly. We have people 
that are in their positions as police officers who barely look as if they've been trained or worse still, have not been trained at all. And yet they're going around terrorizing the British public rather than protecting them from terrorists. Which again, the mainstream media is not gonna tell you. How sad is it that our police also go out of their way to help TV licensing goons to be able to illegally enter people's homes so they can claim the 157 pounds from the elderly and the vulnerable. Back in the day, the police, when people caught someone, like a real criminal, most of the time, you'd hear from the criminals in some cases say, it's a fair cop. That was an old saying they used to say when they got them fair and square. Nowadays, this shit is about as fair as a two-sided coin. It's about as fair as a double-head-sided coin. And you're forced to pick tails. That's how fair our system is right now. We have police that want to arrest concerned parents, concerned patriots, who just want to make sure their kids are safe in their country, who want to be able to grow up and have a future, unlike those three poor bastards who got killed in Southport. But here's Keir the traitor Starmer, calling them all far right and diverting from what happened at that Notting Hill carnival, which, let's face it, is in some degrees a form of degeneracy as well, where people, how do I put this? They take off more than they should, basically. And I already look like I'm about to take off all my clothes, don't I? Anyway, it's basically like that, with a load of crime spree going on in there, with sexual assaults, stabbings, drugs, etc, etc. As I said, 334 arrests. Dozens of offences committed up there. And yet our police are more interested in dealing with us. They're more interested in getting people in for the role that tick a box rather than meet the requirements that should be upheld. Being a certain level of fitness, which I'll never get. Being a certain height, so people can see them above an average crowd and know there's some kind of presence there. And that's just to name a couple. And what event Clueless Cooper needs to understand is that the people don't respect the police first. They have to show they're worthy of our respect. Respect is earned, not given. I'll give you a simple premise. If I went as a guest to somebody's party, I wouldn't go demanding their respect, or sorry, demanding their respect for me. No, I would showcase that I am a respectable person and will abide by the rules of the house and that I'm not going to cause trouble or incite anything and then I'd get the respect because it's earned. The police have not earned our respect because of their behaviour to us over the last 10 plus years. What the police need to understand is that when they stop treating us like pieces of shit, when they start actually doing their job within their remit, when they actually start properly prosecuting criminals, rather than trying to go after any Tom, Dick and Harry on the streets, or the elderly woman Brenda, who's, obviously this is not her real name, but Brenda who's got that fucking pacemaker, and is just at a protest, not even doing anything, and they're arresting her, but they won't do anything about the rapists and the the Islamic attackers, the violent thugs in that side, who are the real far right, let's face it, then yeah, of course the British people are not going to respect the police because they're not worthy of our respect. If they start actually doing their job, if they actually start prosecuting these people, if they actually start treating us with some dignity, rather than try to charge us with their fucking batons and their horseback police, maybe then they'll claw back some shred of decency and respect from the British people. But they need to be following our guidance. They need to be respecting us, not the other way around. Then 
they'll earn our respect. And you want to hear something? Starmer's big ask. Unpopular decisions must be taken in short term to fix the country, not to abandon millions who have suffered so much. Really? Yeah, I call bullshit on that, Keir the Traitor Starmer. I call a shitload of bullshit on that one. Let's face it, we all know what you're doing. You're screwing over the British people. Right, milk for pancakes, we're all sorted. Anyway, they want our respect, and if Kit the Traitor Starmer wants people to stop giving him such negative approval, then maybe these people should start listening to us rather than try to govern themselves and look after number one. Like I said, I'm not gonna advocate for people to attack the police. I'm not gonna advocate for people to attack and murder politicians. I'm not gonna advocate for people to commit violence and thuggery. But these people need to understand the British people are quite rightly pissed off. They're quite rightly angry at our establishment and our police who have chosen to basically stick a middle finger up at us, quite frankly. They have stuck a middle finger up at us for the last 40 to 50 years, the politicians, and the last 10 to 20 years for the police. And I say to the police directly, if you want us to respect you, start respecting us. Start doing your fucking job. Otherwise, you will not get any respect and this will spiral. We've already had another man in London get gunned down because Sadiq Khan has said, oh, terrorism and being shot and what have you and stabbed is part and parcel of living in a big city. Like hell is it? The only part and parcel that should be of any city or wherever about this country, the only thing that should be part and parcel is that Brits are walking in a British country. But we have politicians who with tongues that are barbed like forks a kin of snakes who spray vitriol at us through their words shaped like daggers points. We have people who are more interested in getting political power and money rather than serving the British people they are meant to protect and serve. Oh look, and I come in through the fucking front door and I'll give you three guesses what kind of letter I've got. The legal occupier. <laughs> oh, I have no idea what this is. I couldn't possibly tell you what's in this letter. It's a TV licensing letter. Oh, as you have not responded to our letters yet, you have left us no alternative but to proceed with the... <laughs> Stroke number two. You have left us no alternative but to proceed with the final stages of our investigation. An officer has been scheduled to visit my address to find out if TV is being watched, recorded or downloaded illegally. The officer may visit your property any day of the week, morning or evening. This information below explains the procedure. You may refer to it during a visit from the officer. We can apply to court for a search warrant to gain access to your property. That's true. An officer may interview you under caution in accordance with national criminal law. No, he can't. He's a glorified salesman. He has no power over the British public. He has no power over anyone. Oh look, where are my clothes gone? Oh, maybe he has some power. He can get my clothes off. Anyway, he has no power over you. Let me put it that way. He has no power, legally or lawfully, to do anything to you. So he can't interview you under caution. That's a crock of shit. He's not an officer. He's a glorified salesman. Nothing more. These are the same TV licensing goons, by the way, that the police normally side with, even though they are supposed to, and I quote, keep the peace. Anything you say to the officer may be used as evidence in court. Well, there's a simple solution to that one. Don't let him in. Simple as that. Like I said, the glorified salesman. They have no right to enter your property. They have no right to actually sell you anything. They're trying to sell you something, basically. They're cold callers. And I would give them the same level of respect as any other cold caller. No thank you. Close the door in their face. Lock the door. Move on. If your property needs a TV license, you will still need to buy one. You may have to pay up a fine of up to £1,000 plus any legal costs and or compensation. 
That's only if they manage to convict you. And there's only one way they can get a conviction on you. If you talk. Do you know what I do with these? I do one of two things. I either wipe my ass with these, or an even better and much more direct and satisfying one is I rip them up. But then that being said, you can't then use it to say to these fuckers, stop harassing me. So maybe what you can do, keep a record of these. Obviously my address has been taken out here because I don't want people to see it. I don't want to be doxxed after all. But you can definitely put a complaint in to these fuckers and say, you are harassing me. Cease and desist or I will take you to court for harassment. Basically. And the police wonder why we don't respect them. Because they side with goons like that. They side with Islam. They want to prosecute people, or sorry, persecute people for saying mean things on the internet rather than do their fucking job and deal with the real criminals. If you're lucky, you'll get a person to see you in a week about a burglary. Oh, but mean things on the internet? They'll have squads of cop cars round just like that. Few minutes. Maybe even seconds if they're really close by. Do you want to know why people don't respect you? There you go. Done a whole fucking video about it. And including some extras as well. At the end of the day, we don't owe the police anything. They owe us. Let's remind these pricks and Keir the traitor Starmer, if it weren't for the working class, which he claimed to be for, but he's blatantly against... If he's really for us, he would actually respect us. But we are the people who fund their fucking jobs. How long do you think they'd last if all the taxpayer money is gone? Where they can't leech off of us. We just down tools, take six months off. How well do you think here the traitor Sama will hold up? Or the police? Oh, they'll reform very quickly after that. I guarantee it. Much like Just Up Oil, if you were to find them fucking 50 grand for any co crime committed against the country and any inconvenience they've caused, they'll stop real quick. Because they rely on us for their jobs. They rely on us to run the country. If we down tools, we can bring this country to a standstill. Just like that. Remind them of that. Remind them who has the real power. We are the people. We have the power. And we can take out the trash, metaphorically speaking, of course. And they need to remember that next time they get their little paycheck come in. If it weren't for us, they'd be out of jobs. Because they wouldn't have tax payer, tax payer money to rely upon. They need to understand that. Now before I go as well, I'm also going to be linking in the description below my Twitter that I've actually created and got set up today. Which I may occasionally put the odd tweet out here and there. I don't avidly use it yet, but that may change. But I will link it in the description below so that you can see it for yourself. Provide some follows and what have you, and we'll keep in touch, mayhaps. But, yeah, that's the way I look at it more than anything. The police need to be reminded that they need to be respecting us, not the other way round. We are the British people, not the British slaves. We are the British people, not the British doormats. Once they understand that, and understand that we have the capacity to render them jobless. They'll change very quickly. I think these thousands of officers that have resigned are probably the good coppers. And I think the cold bitter truth on the back of that means we're going to end up seeing a lot more bent coppers. People as bent as a five, uh, sorry, a nine bob note. We're going to see people who are more interested in... Fulfilling DEI quotas 
and appeasing Islam or running away from Islam rather than people who, when the going gets tough, they're going to get going. These police officers will run at the first sign of trouble. Let's remind them what we do with cowards. If they don't want to do their job, turn your backs on them. I've never advocated for violence. I've never advocated for anybody to attack the police. But you know what I will advocate for? Turning your back on them. They hold us in such contempt. So next time they ask for your help in dealing with a real criminal who may actually be putting them in danger, leave them be. They hold us in such contempt, especially the ones higher up in the police, leave them to it. Let's see how well they do when they don't have the support of the British public.